we're going to head to western Montana after trophy antelope with a bow. We're going to be hunting with Eastman staffer Jordan Brashears. He's not very happy right now. All right, here we are in Montana on day one of our antelope hunt. Matt just showed up here a couple hours ago and we're gonna see if we can locate a buck to put a stock on this evening. And as you can see, smoke just blasted in here with the wind and we got fires to the west of us, so it's making visibility pretty difficult. But uh, we're gonna just go draw at a time here and see what we can put together and hopefully we'll find one. Although the antelope sightings were few and far between this evening, Jordan did manage to turn up a good buck just before sunset that gives him some hope for day two. We just parked here on the back side of this ranch. We just located a nice buck on the other side of this hill behind me. He's a real neat buck. He's got good character. He's probably 13 and a half inches tall, but he's really, really wide and got good forks. He's bedded down right next to a hedgerow. We're just gonna try to just belly in on him and if we can get close enough to make a shot and put it together, we'll be happy. I'm just gonna snatch up here by myself. And I'll see if I can see him and I'll signal at you. As Jordan is about to find out, Hunting antelope in the wheat stubble is no easy task. It looks like the guys may have their work cut out for them on this hunt. We've got the row right here. You can see it about 150 yards over there. We don't know if he moved or not, but we're gonna have to assume that he's close to where he was since we're gonna just walk right back over to this row and follow it over to be quieter than this stubble. And uh, he, if we're, our guess is right, he should be about 200 yards away right now, just barely over this roll. And the wind is kind of going back and forth, so we're just going to have to go with it. He's right over my shoulder, about 80, 90 yards, batted down just off the edge where we wanted him to be. It's going to be, I just got a little grass to slide by. So we're going to see if I can do what's almost impossible to do and uh, sneak up on him and get close enough for a shot. The jig might be up on Jordan. This buck seems to know there's something awry on the horizon. Well, we got into about 100 yards. The wind has switched to our backs, and we just couldn't be quiet enough in this. We're just in some stubble here from straw. So it was close. He walked actually up to 85 yards from us and was trying to check us out back out of here, he's not too spooked. And uh, see if we can get back in here tomorrow or later this evening on him again. We'll just try to get him in a better spot. We're getting ready to head back up in this uh, gully behind us here. There's 
some private and mixed with some public land. And uh, there's probably 100, 150 antelope that live in these hills. So we're expecting to just have them kind of bouncing all over the place. So we'll just kind of ease up into this draw behind me here and see what we can find. Yeah, I'll just kind of swirl in. But it's not from us. There must, there must be another buck shot up. With plenty of bucks around the area, Jordan decides to try setting up a ground blind to ambush a feeding or traveling buck antelope. Now, he just needs to find the perfect spot to set up his blind. And that could be a challenging proposition in itself. There's like 12 or 15 of them out there. One smaller buck. He's borderline right at the bottom end of what we're looking for. I think we'll hang tight and uh, at least try to get a closer look. It's not shaking out quite how I was hoping. We're just gonna have to keep moving and try to hit, get up to that next ridge. See if we can spot anything from there that's settled out into a good spot. After a full day of buck antelope sightings, later that evening, Jordan has spotted a good buck in the perfect position for a stock. Okay. We're gonna give it another try. We just spotted a huge herd just right over this edge. We got a small draw that we can use to sneak up on them. As it started to rain, so it'll help with noise. Uh, there's several bucks in the group. It's a long shot, but we've got another hour of light, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a try and see what happens. unseasonably damp ground and a calm wind might be just what Jordan needs to get the job done on this bow hunt. It was pretty good for a 15 minute stock, but not quite enough terrain to help us out. But we still got 80 yards from a good one, and uh, I'm just not gonna shoot that far, so. But we're gonna head back up to the truck. We got another hour and a half of light, hour of light, something like that. Let's see if we can find a couple more. We just pulled up here to a little alfalfa pivot, and there's a couple of bucks bedded back in here somewhere, feeding back and forth. And we're just gonna just go through. There's a bunch of fingers in this pivot. It's kind of unique. And we're hoping we can comb them and get to a point where we can actually see and shoot across to, from a finger to a finger or something like that, get some cover. So the wind is blowing across the top of this pivot here. So we're gonna try to stay on the uh, west side and just hopefully we won't have any problems with it. We're just gonna sneak in here and see what we can find. Got the 
this buck bedded down up here in front of us. I think he's the one we first saw this morning that was by himself. He's a good buck. We're definitely would be happy with him. Uh, he's in a decent spot to stock if we can get in the draw with him, which is going to be difficult to say the least. This buck is bedded on the perfect perch overlooking the valley below. Not exactly the perfect scenario for a stock. about antelope bucks, they don't ever stay bedded for very long because antelope have a very small stomach relative to their size to make room for their enlarged cardiovascular system. Antelope have to feed every two hours or so, which is what Jordan is just about to find out. I'm going to try to back down to this gully that we came up. If we don't blow him, get out of here. close encounters, Jordan has been unable to get an antelope to cooperate during the bow season, forcing Jordan to come back and hunt for an antelope buck during the rifle season with his bow, making things all that much harder. Shortly after the October opener of the Montana rifle season, it doesn't take Jordan long to find another buck in the perfect spot for a stock. I always try to take my boots off for the last 100 yards. Go with the wool sock. It just totally cuts the noise down. Before long, Jordan is off on a stock, orange vest and all. down just 50 yards Whew, man that's awesome that's a perfect shot I made the bad bad the cardinal sin of 
filming. Yeah, I didn't wait for the filmer. <laughs> oh, no. Everything else is perfect. We worked our tail off for this buck. Let's go see what he looks like. Beautiful buck. Very excited about this hunt. It turned out great. I was kind of beginning to wonder. This is the last day. Remember, the only way to hunt and take trophy big game is fair chase. 